And everyone ran around and went, this is terrible. Unfortunately, no one owned it. So everyone moaned about it. No one did anything about it. And I said to him at the time, I said, well done. I said, you have just successfully taught your customers that Amazon sells everything you do. Why don't we have different departments set up that are in silos? They don't talk to each other. They only communicate when things go wrong. They have their own measures of success. And we end up with multiple misaligned measures and targets. People become frustrated. And ultimately, what that means is in these silos, there's not a lot of trust. So we need to understand what's really going on in our business. What's causing all of these deviations? You know, is, is it data issues? Is it compliance issues? Is it people not working well together? And one of the things I need to understand more than anything else is what is it we're actually trying to achieve here? Who are the customers that we're actually focusing on? What do they value? How we align our processes in such a way that we're delivering that value to them? Or are we just measuring activities? Because it's all about effective outcomes, not efficient activities. And most organizations focus on efficient activities. The, the ways in which you earn money is different. The career for life model, that's gone. So for all the businesses that I help, I ask a sort of very simple question that says, um, what's it like to work around here? Well, give me a couple of few words that tell me what it's like to work in this organization. And the word that comes out again and again and again and again is frustrated. Which is not a bad word, it's better than disillusioned or suicidal or something else that you can mention, but frustration seems to be a key word. Because well, we've got frustrated leaders. We think we know where we want to go, I know what the goals is, why aren't we getting there? Why is it so difficult? We end up with frustrated customers. You know, why do you keep dropping the ball on the deliveries? Why don't we get what we want when we want it? Why is it that Amazon can deliver anything the next day and you seem to take six weeks? We have frustrated sometimes scared CFOs who are worried about what's actually going on in all these spreadsheets and all this detail down at level. What risks are we exposed to that I just don't know about? And traditional management's out of date. So the skills, really, are yeah, the skills to innovate, the skills to think, the skills to work agile, the skills to think value rather than function. And we give people the freedom to think, that's the customer, that's what they value. You tell me how you think you can improve the delivery. And this is empowering. And when I've worked with some companies, you know, like I said, you know, yesterday I was a hairy ass picker. But now you've told me that I actually am a critical cog in the delivery of reliability to this customer. And you've just allowed me to think about how I could improve this process. Well, I've got 50 different ideas I've had in my head, but no one's ever asked me before. So the sort of smart creatives, as Google call them, we these new talent millennial people who come in who've got a different mindset. They think differently. They act differently. They're not expecting a job for life. They want things a little bit sooner. And there's a war for that talent. And some companies are winning that war, and other companies, unfortunately, are not. The culture drags down the arms, so it turns like an eye. And they do one or two things they can do then. They can quit, because they say, hey, I've come from I don't know, P and G, Unilever, wherever. I know what it's like to be T-shaped. I know we should be thinking long term. I know we should be focused around the customer. This organization is stopping me from delivering what I know I'm capable of. So they might leave. Or worse, they quit and stay. So it's about taking this agile mindset and empowering it into the organization. Because what this does is create engagement. If I can clarify the contribution that I pay to the delivery of customer value, and you free me to work with people in the organization so that we can work determine the best possible way, and you give me the tools where I don't need to go to IT with a functional spec every single time I want a different field on a report, but I have the capability to answer my own questions when we need to, then we can just focus on the customer. The, the best companies you know, innovate when they don't need to. So if you look at the companies like Amazon, as an example, who are looking at this technology, not just to make their supply chain a little bit more efficient, but ultimately to completely redesign the end-to-end -end chain. They, they can create new platforms, new ways of monetizing the platforms that drive suppliers and customers to them and make them the first port of call. People on Prime spend four times as much as people who don't Prime. I am witness to that. I love and hate Amazon. I love it because it puts me at the center of their universe. I hate it because I know what it's doing. It's destroying the competition. It's wiping out smaller companies that probably employ people who pay taxes. And it's a Faustian bargain I think we're making for convenience. And this is the analogy I use for people who say, oh, big data is the answer. Big data 
is not the answer if you're not able to even articulate the question. Okay, the I world is getting more complicated. We not only need to understand the planes that have landed, we need to understand the interrelationships between the planes and the air. Different purchase orders, sales orders, production orders, and actually the impact on the planes that have yet to take off. If this purchase order is late, what's that going to mean? Is it going to affect this production order? Does a production order contain items in my bill of material that contain on that customer order that that's going to be late? Which ones are critical? Which ones can I delay? This is sort of prescriptive analytics that we kind of need our fingers on that says, what's actually going on here and what is the impact? I always use the line that says, you cannot control what you do not understand and you cannot improve what you don't control. The opposite is therefore true. You can, understanding enables control, control enables improvement. Most companies just simply do not understand what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis. They operate in a reactive mode. They are very good chaos managers, you know, and, and they, they firefight and react on a day-to-day -day basis. The companies they're competing against now, you know, to, op to offer a one-hour or two-hour delivery, you have to be in control. You can't improve and innovate if you haven't got solid foundations upon to build on those. And you can understand and control without improving innovation, but it's a short-run game. Someone else will take your business away from you. Which means that the competitors now have a choice. We either dance to the same tune, we create our own tune, or we get left behind.